What's going on, guys? We'll see if this works. We'll see if I got into some better territory here with some with some Wi-Fi. As you guys can see, I'm not in my house right now. So we just got down to a place in Seward, well, in Alaska, called Seward. Let's see if I can set this up a little bit differently. You can't turn your phone. Rotate your phone. You can't turn your phone while recording. Okay. So apparently I can't turn my phone, guys. Let's see if I can set this up. All right. I see Allison is in here. I usually don't go live on my phone very often. As you guys can see, obviously I'm usually behind a computer. Um, so we'll see how well this works today. Throw Somebody throw some comments in so I can see if I'm tracking things right. See, Robin Hurt is here. Robin, what's going on, friend? Throw some comments, you guys, so I can I can make sure that I'm seeing things right. As you guys know, I like to make sure when I'm doing these things that, um, that we all can interact with each other. Yo, what's up, dog? Okay, cool. Okay, cool, 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 cool. I can see you guys. Awesome. So like I said, we, uh, what's going on, Ramey, Allison, Robin, Haley, James, what up, baby boy? How you doing, man? You know what's funny? Um, yeah, this cabin is actually dope, but it's not a, it's not a, I guess it is kind of like a cabin, but so we're staying at an RV park. This is actually a military. So you guys can Google this. It's called, um, it's a down in a place called Seward, Alaska. Look at this. Here we are in July. Oh man, if this fog wasn't here. So there's some gigantic ass mountains right behind me. Like this is all mountain right here. And uh, you guys can see the, the clouds are pretty low today. Look at this. We still have freaking snow on our mountains and it's July. Wild. And right back here are some really big mountains. We'll see if the clouds clear up a little bit while we're on today. But anyway, we got down to, we got down to Seward yesterday with just enough time for our, our, uh, our uh, Growth Co. coaching call, which was amazing, by the way. If you guys are not in our mentorship, you need to reach out to my team. You guys need to get some more information. We are um, basically putting everybody five years ahead of where they would typically be in their business. Um, so last night we had my operations manager, James, come in. And he spent, uh, gosh, like two and a half hours with um with everybody and we were talking uh lead generation we were talking underwriting we're talking about how we are growing our business and how we are able to pay ourselves from buying properties so that we don't have to wholesale first and then use that money to go buy properties there's this big misconception that when you get into real estate if you don't have any money if you don't have any connections if you don't have nothing then you have to start out wholesaling, which is not the case at all. You don't have to start out wholesaling. And it's something I wish that I would have known right from the get-go when I got into real estate because I always thought that that's what you had to do. I thought you had to jump into real estate, start wholesaling, build and scale a wholesaling business. So then you'll have enough money to take that and then go buy properties and at the same time, keep your real estate business fed. And that couldn't be further from the truth. So that's a big thing that we go over and our mentorship is showing everybody, hey, skip the wholesaling process, skip the fix and flip business. If you're if you're getting into real estate because you want to own properties and you want to build a portfolio, then this is what we're teaching. And we're teaching you how to pay yourself up front while you do it. So you make money while you're purchasing properties. So we had my operations manager come in to the, 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 and talk with our, our cohort, our mentorship last night. And that's exactly what we went over. We went over some of the deals. We've got about five deals just this week, um, that, uh, that we're looking to purchase. And, um, 
if we end up moving on them, uh, if we end up buying all of them, we will, we'll make just on those, on those properties alone, about $80,000 or so roughly accumulatively from buying properties, guys. We'll make 80 grand just from buying the properties. How crazy is that? Now, to give you guys some context, we also have properties. I mean, we got we got properties all over. We just had a couple pad splits um, in Jacksonville that we, we purchased that have uh, gone live within the last two weeks, which means they've been renovated. We've put them out and they are about 75% filled already after two weeks. One of them will net, not gross guys, one of them will net us about $4,000 a month. And the other one will net us about 3,700, give or take somewhere in there. So just on two properties. So that's, that's 7,700 bucks a month that we are netting from just two properties. And these are the types of things that we show our students and show our clients. And so, um, yeah, we had a great and amazing, um, time with, uh, with, uh, that zoom last night, being able to go over the underwriting and show everybody numbers and how we're, how we're doing lead generation and how we're putting this whole process into place. And at the same time, making sure that you have the operation side set up on the back end to be able to go in and handle things like servicing property management and maintaining, uh, you know, uh, contact with the, 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 the contractors and, and just systematizing everything on the back end and putting a team in place that'll allow you to scale properly so that you can continue doing what you do best, which is growing the business, which is what you you should be focusing on is, uh, staying in your, your zone of genius as Dean Graziosi likes to talk about. So if you guys want more information about that, um, preemptively, I know Haley, I probably am not supposed to say this, so I apologize. Um, but I, everybody in here, you'll be, you guys will be the first to hear it. Um, we are running our last live class in August. We'll have our next class starting in August. Um, and that'll be our, our last live class. So anybody who is outside of this is not going to hear that. So you guys are hearing that first. I have not advertised this anywhere. I don't think Haley has told anybody, but this will be our last live class is the one starting in August. So if you guys want more information about that and, and, uh, to understand how you can put yourself five years ahead of the curve, then reach out to Haley, reach out to Carlin, reach out to James, reach out to anybody on this team. <laughs> Elena, I freaking love your face. I'm excited. Um, Elena and I are going to do some deals together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for being here. So I just wanted to fill you guys in on just some of the things that are going on in, in my life and what we're up to and, and what, uh, our, our mentorship is up to and what you guys can expect. Um, I wanted to, and, and, and what we're doing in real estate. And so today I kind of wanted to spend just a few minutes. Today's not going to be a long one, but I just wanted to spend a few minutes talking about self-development for a second, because Self-development is one of those things. I think, um, I think Jim Rohn said it best. He said, your income will never surpass your own personal development. And I thought that was just so thinking genius because when I was getting started in real estate, I always thought, I don't need to be reading books. I don't need to be, I don't, I don't even have time for that. You know what I need to be doing is I need to be hitting the phones, man. I need to be doing something that is generating some money or at least what I thought was money generating activities and me having that same thought process. Maybe some of you guys, uh, have that same thought process. Maybe some of you guys are like, you know what? I don't have time to read books right now, Jesse. I don't have time to work on my own self-development. I don't have time to, uh, you know, better myself or pay for coaching or, or, uh, you know, whatever it is. But I, I truly understand on such an, uh, such a deeper level now what people say when they when they talk about and i and i used to be this person i i used to look i'd look at the cost of a book i'd look at the cost of a course i'd look at the cost of a mentorship i'd look at the cost of of all of these things but what i never took the time to consider was the cost of not 
investing in myself. And um, the personal development side of things absolutely plays into what it is that we're trying to do. There's two sides of business here. There's, there's the tactical side of things, which is, you know, the comping, the underwriting, the cold calling, the overcome, the objections, like learning, like those kind of tactical skills. There's like this side of business, right? But there's also this other side that I think a lot of people neglect. And that is kind of a lot of the strategic side of things. You have to have both. Robin says the thought, that thought dusting, the cost of not, oh my goodness. Um, Man, I could, I could spend, I could spend an hour going down that rabbit hole. Yeah. It's, it's crazy to think about. It's crazy to think about, um, what the cost of, of not investing in yourself. You know what? I, um, I saw this video that was really, really interesting and it was taken from a conference and there was a gentleman that was on stage giving a talk and he, he called on, on a young lady in the audience. And he said, ma'am, how much money do you make a year? And she said, 50,000. And so he goes and he writes $50,000 on this whiteboard. And then he turns around and he writes a million dollars above her 50,000. And then he adds the minus sign, draws a line, and then subtracts 50,000 from a million. And then he writes 950,000 on the board. And he said, for every year, that you don't know how to make a million dollars every year of your life that goes by that you don't know how to make a million dollars. You cut life a check for $950,000. Imagine that. Put that into perspective for a second, guys. For every year that you don't know how to make Oh, Robin, I'm, (laughs) this has not, let let me, let me be super clear. I'm, I'm teaching through you and I'm so, um, I'm so passionate about it because I see myself more than anything. This is me giving myself advice. This is me giving my old self advice. Like if I was speaking to my old self, this, these are some of the things that I would share. So thank you for initiating that prompt in no way, shape or form. I'm not picking on you at all, but it's interesting to really have that perspective because in this case, um, you know, that's, that's the cost of not knowing how to do a lot of things. That's the cost of not working on your self development. That's the cost of not investing in yourself. And if you can learn how to not cut life a check for 950 grand, and you can be five years ahead of where you typically would be from just investing in yourself. My goodness. Like, why would you not do that? Kind of silly, right? Um, so I'm such a big proponent of that, but, um, oh man, where was I going? I was going down somewhere. I lost my train of thought here, man. I totally forgot where I was going with that. But I wanted to get, I wanted to share just a couple things with you guys today. Again, this isn't going to be a big long thing, but I just wanted to give you guys some things to consider. I think when a lot of people think about self development, they think about it in the in the wrong light. Obviously, one is they they usually don't um, they usually don't consider the cost of not investing in themselves, right? Which is a it's a lot. It's absolutely something you've got to consider. Probably should be one of the most important things you should consider, especially. If you're in a position where you need more money, um, I think a lot of people, when they start making these changes in their life, what they end up doing is, and you see it a lot of times as well as people, um, people adding processes and systems into place. When you look at people's businesses, they end up uh, overcomplicating just the ever living crap out of it. It's always addition. It's an addition. It's an addition. It's, Hey, we need more people. Then we need more systems and we need more automations and we need X. And um, that's completely the wrong way to do it. it. Not only do they take that same line of thinking for how they build their business, but they, they also do the exact same thing when it comes to their self-development. And I'm sure you guys have probably seen this with a lot of, 
I don't know if gurus is the right word, but just a lot of people that are, that are sharing content and, and, uh, you know, talking a lot about the whole self-development space is, you know, when they wake up in the morning, the first thing they, you know, that you've got to do is you got to, you got to go hit the steam room and then you got to go take a cold plunge and then you got to do 15 minutes worth of meditation and then you've got to go work out and then you've got to, you got to go do the next thing. You got to do your affirmations. Then you've got to spend some time going journaling. I mean, the way that some of these people think about self-development is all these other things that they have to add on. And for a lot of people, man, I mean, that is first and foremost, it's, it's completely the wrong way of, of, of thinking. It's completely the wrong way of, of doing it, especially if it's taking up four hours of your morning before you can even start getting to work. But a frame of thought that I would like you guys to, to have, and that I would like to share with you guys is when it comes to self-development, the thing that most people are missing, it isn't what you need to add. First and foremost, it's what you need to remove. Okay. It's about subtracting the things in your life. First, your life is like a, like your life is like a garden. And if it's left unattended and your, your, let's say your self-development is a garden. And if it's left unattended, it's going to grow weeds and vines and things that you don't want in there. But unless you're going back and you're paying attention to it, you're never going to know. So I was, I was about 25 years old, 26 before I really started kind of getting a little bit more into the the self-development side of things. And I used to think that I needed to, to add more things. I needed to be doing more things. And what you don't want to do is you don't want to start planting seeds in a garden that's filled with a bunch of vines and weeds and things that would be detriment to your growth. So before we start adding things, when it comes to your self-development, the thing that we need to be doing is we need to be subtracting a lot. So for me, I didn't really start understanding what that concept meant until I was 29 years old. I'll be 34 in just a couple weeks. So about five years ago, I started getting into this stuff and I, and that was kind of when I started to understand that I needed to start subtracting things in my life. For me, I had to undo 29 years work at, worth of, uh, you know, baggage worth of thinking a certain way. There were, there were things that happened, you know, in my childhood as, as we all have. And I don't necessarily mean something that was just, um, uh, so, for lack of a better term, metaphorically speaking, like cancerous or um, negative or, you know, something like that. But um, there are certain things that we thought about when I, when I grew up, I grew up in a small town called Ryrie, Idaho. Surprise. I mean, population was like under 500. Surprise. The main road was even paved. And I grew up in an average household completely average. We thought average. We thought about money average, thought about work average. I, I went to an average school. I had exactly average friends. I had average grades. Like everything about my entire upbringing was 100% completely average. My thoughts about money and wealth were probably similar to how, how some of you guys grew up thinking about money and wealth. When I looked at people with money, um, it was always something to kind of aspire to do, but you didn't want to make too much because then you would be a cheating, greedy, filthy, rich snob, like it would change you. And so we kind of came up, I, I came up with these excuses in my mind that was like, okay, I want to make just enough money, but I don't want to be, I don't want to be rich because then I'll turn into this evil person. And so I always grew up thinking that I had to have a six figure, uh, you know, if I could figure out how to make a hundred thousand dollars a year, then that would be something to strive for. That would be okay. Go to college, go get, uh, you know, get, go get into all this debt, um, getting a degree in underwater basket weaving, you know? 
So that's kind of how I grew up. And so when I turned, when I, when I, when I was 29 years old and I started to really kind of understand my, myself a little bit better and my thoughts around money and wealth and relationships and service and all those kind of things, I started to understand before I could, I could really start to grow in the way that I wanted to grow. The first thing I had to do was I had to undo 29 years worth of thinking a certain way. I had to undo 29 years worth of acting a certain way. I had to undo 29 years worth of, um, you know, holding myself accountable. I had to undo 29 years worth of, uh, acknowledging and limiting the things that I was tolerating in my life. I had to undo 29 years worth of, uh, managing my time a certain way. And so before I can start including all these other things, that's what I had to turn around and I had to start picking all of these things out. I had to start removing all of these things so that I had a clear garden that I could continue like start planting seeds into that are going to help give me the, the abilities and the skills and ultimately mold me into that person. We always talk about self-development is becoming an entirely different person. If you guys have followed me for any amount of time, you guys have probably heard me say this to at one point or another, but my favorite Jim Rohn quote is if somebody hands you a million dollars, then it's best you learn how to become a millionaire so that you get to keep the money. And that's exactly what he's talking about is you have to become the type of person that can not only make and maintain that kind of money, but you have to be the kind of person that can, that can handle it. I mean, when you look at people, when you look at people who win the lottery, now let's take away, um, let's take, let's, let's remove the scenario off the table. Let's say that person even knows how to invest it. Okay. Cause I know that's kind of usually the go-to thing is like people get, you know, win the lottery, they have no idea what to do with it. Let's pretend for a second that they actually knew what to do with it. But what I kind of want to touch on is the self-development side of things, the personal side of things. Like, are you even somebody that can handle that kind of money first and foremost? And what I'm talking about is you're going to be, when, when, when you win the lottery, people are going to know who won the lottery. Ooh, I love what Robin said. Be worthy of keeping it. Elena, we are hundred percent going to hammer down on time management. Um, but that's exactly what I'm talking about. When you have people that find out that you won the lottery, you have people that are reaching out about, about, about it. They want to interview you. They want to ask you what you have going on. You might even have close friends or strangers, even for that fact, and family members that think that they are entitled to your money. Now I want you to think about all of those kinds of scenarios. Are you the type of person that can even handle that kind of pressure, that kind of stress, that kind of anxiety? That's why the self-development comes into play. So you can be that person that's, keep, that's capable of keeping that money should somebody land a million dollars on your lap. So the way I see self-development, we always hear you have to become an entirely different person. And that's what Jim Rohn's talking about. But I want to take it a step further real quick and give you a, a different perspective. You do have to become an entirely different person. But what it is that you're becoming is the true you. You're becoming more of you. You're finding you at your core. That's what you're doing. You're not, you're not, you're not becoming a, a different being. You're becoming more of the person that you are meant to be more of the person that you are capable of becoming. And the way that I like to visualize what that looks like is let's pretend for a second. Let's say you're at, you're at, um, maybe your parents' house or maybe a, a grandparents' house. And let's say your grandparents or your parents have an attic and nobody goes up to this attic, this attic, nobody's gone up there for years. I mean, it's almost kind of like out of a scene, out of a movie.
And one day, you finally decide to go up there. And as you're walking up there, you're kind of noticing, I mean, there's about an inch of dust. And as you're walking up those steps, you get to the top, you're looking around at everything. Maybe you find some things that maybe your grandparents had. Maybe it was something they had as a child. As you're looking around the room, you see the sun kind of peeking through a window up there. And you see it reflecting some of that light. And you notice there's a mirror there. And you walk up to that mirror, and this mirror's got an inch of dust on it. And as you reach your hand out to wipe off some of that dust, put it in the comments. What do you guys begin to see? You look into this mirror. This mirror's got an inch of dust on it. And as you go to wipe your finger, you put, you, you put a, a stripe down the, the middle of that mirror. And as you clear some of that dust, what do you guys see? What do you see in that reflection? Who's staring back at you? It's you. You get to see a more clear version of yourself. And that's what, that's what self-development is. We've got to remove all these weeds and bugs, snakes. If you're Chris James, you might have a, an alligator or two because you live in Florida in your garden. So we've got to remove those things first so that we can start planting these seeds to grow from. So before you guys start adding things to your day, before you start taking on a bunch of these things, I think journaling is one of the biggest things that you guys can do. Start journaling so you start to understand your thoughts. You start to understand your emotions. You start to understand all these different things. You start to understand your ability to communicate. Do you know that if, if, if you understand your ability to communicate and as you start to under, understand yourself a little more clearer and you start to take a step back and you start to not only see things from a different perspective, but you also start to see things from other people's perspective. One of my favorite quotes is from, I saw this, this, this quote, I think, I think Pace had this, this quote actually. And in, in, if I remember right, I want to say it was in Forbes magazine. And it is, it is served as a, as an anchor. And I think about this nearly almost every single day. And I'll share this with you. I, I, I wish I could, I'm on my phone right now. Otherwise I'd read it verbatim, but it basically, the quote was basically this. Always assume the best intentions from everyone. Because when something happens that you didn't expect uh, you know, our, our initial reaction is to think like, why the crap did somebody do this? Why did they, why did they, what were they thinking? Did they not consider this, 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 and this? That could be somebody you're working with, could be somebody on your team, could be whoever. Could be somebody you just met. And we all know. Those things happen all the time, right? But the first school of thought I always go to is right immediately without even with, and I've gotten so good at this. I've been able to change my entire identity to make this my default way of thinking where it's been, it's been ingrained into my subconscious. Like it's just, I'm becoming more of me from doing and including little things like this. But you always, right off the get-go, no matter what, boom, I always just go ahead and just assume the best intentions possible. I go ahead and assume 
that they already have information that I just either haven't unearthed yet or I'm not privy to. And by me going ahead and just assuming that, what does that do to the emotion side? It calms your emotions, right? Like you're, you're automatically like you, you're able to handle it and you're able to think clearly. You're able to make continue making sound decisions for the business, for the company, for your, your partners. And just assuming that things were done with the best intentions, it enables you to do things a little bit differently than you typically would have where, you know, most of us, the way, well, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and say all of us, the way that, um, you know, we are as humans is, is to react first where there's smoke, there's fire, right? And, uh, by making that kind of a, a mantra and understanding how we as humans think based on how we think changes our emotion based on what our emotion is, the pain is, is going to dictate the action that we then take. And I know, um, you know, I don't, I don't know about, about you guys. I know in my lifetime, I have certainly said things, maybe it was to a, a sibling, a friend, my, my, my parents that I wish that I could have just taken back. And I'm sure maybe you guys have, have had similar experiences, but once it's out there, you can't take it back. You can't, you can't suck it back in. Right. And so taking the time to reflect, like even just little things like this, make the biggest differences in growing your business. Haley says, oof, same silver tongue problems. <laughs> so these little things like this, you have to start weeding out and understanding yourself better before you start tacking on other things. And so that's what I want to leave you guys with today. I want to leave you guys with just something to consider if you're, as you're looking back at your own self-development, as you're looking back at your own journey and just how we as humans are um, and, you know, consider some of the things that... Um, that uh, some consider some of that, for lack of a better term, was called baggage that you're carrying um, from your your own personal experiences that that life has given you. Are they all true? Um, and if not, what do you have to do about changing those beliefs so that you can move forward and ultimately start clearing more of that dust off that you see on the mirror and becoming who you are meant to be. So that's what I'm going to leave you guys with. I want you guys to take some time. I saw somebody in the comments was like, dude, I hate journaling. Or was it? I think it was Manuel. Oh, it was. It was. I, I get it, dude. I hate it too. Because when I, when I, uh, when I first started this, this whole thing, um, I was like, dude, like, I don't got, I've got time to read books. I don't got time to be socializing and networking. I don't have time for self-development like that'll come and i was so focused on just like calling calling sellers calling sellers calling sellers calling sellers and i i by not working on myself by not working on uh my own self-development and feeding my mind appropriately i i um i stayed on a hamster wheel longer than i should have i could have been and this is where by the way even just that little tidbit i gave you what an amazing, uh, what an amazing thing to include in your arsenal when it comes to self-development to have as a leader. Just anything that happens that you weren't expecting or anything that happens wrong, big takeaway today. Just go ahead and automatically assume the best of intentions. Just go ahead and assume that that person did the things that they did with the best of intentions and that there probably are pieces to that story that you just have not unearthed yet. And I'm going to leave that with you guys. Thank you guys for jumping on. I really appreciate you guys. Um, for those of you guys that jumped in and missed the whole beginning, uh, I, I'm down in, in Seward, Alaska today. It took my family um, camping for about the next week or so. So I'm excited um, to be able to get out and do some fishing. 
Uh, Manuel says, also, you and Chris need to buy these sub two triplexes off me. Dude, bro, send those to me. Text me. Shoot me a DM real quick, and I will, if you don't have, um, if you don't have our email, shoot me a DM, and I will, actually, you know what? Maybe I can, maybe I can send it right now. Ooh, here we go. Manuel, I'd love to do a deal with you, bro. I'm going to send you my email in the comments right now. Dude, let's do something together, bro. I would love that. I'd be humbled to do something with you, bro. Um, Yeah, that's all I've got for you guys today. For those of you guys that missed it at the very beginning, uh, shared some of the things that we're doing in our business, shared um, some of the ways that we're buying property. If you guys are interested, if you guys are on this wholesaling hamster wheel and you're in real estate because you want to buy properties, that's exactly what our mentorship teaches. And um, so if you guys would love some more information, as a matter of fact, we, we, we're, we're paying ourselves to buy these properties. And then in addition to the cash flow that we're getting from them. So if you guys want more information, I bet literally zero, zero pressure. Um, you simply just want more information to see if it'd be a good fit for you. Definitely reach out to myself. You can reach out to Haley, our team. Um, just happy to be a resource for you guys any way that we can. As you guys can see, it's uh, it's starting to rain in, so I'm going to skid out a little bit. But love you guys. I appreciate you guys. I hope you guys have an awesome, awesome rest of your day. Thank you, Elena. Appreciate you guys. Thank you, guys. We'll chat with you guys soon.